My lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Transport Fever 2. You join me at episode number 12 of the old Canada Let's Play Transport Fever 2 series. In this series, we've taken a custom map from the Steam Workshop, which is a recreation of Alberta and British Columbia region of Canada, including the Rocky Mountains and the primary city of Calgary. Now, in the last episode, if you missed it, I'll put a link to it in the top right corner. Uh, but if you did miss it, as a quick pricey, what we did is we've set up the start of our Rocky Mountain passenger line. And that is running from Cochrane, just over here. And it comes down and we got as far as Canmore in the first episode. We also have our first train running the Rocky Mountain Railway. And that is the Peter Ray. Here it is now, looking rather marvellous in the blue livery. Looks very majestic and almost quite regal, I would say. A very fitting train indeed. We will be adding an next train onto the Rocky Mountain Railway today. And much like the Peter A, this is going to have a custom name from one of my subscribers. And this is going to be the, the Marshalls. I believe that's how you pronounce that. If I am mispronouncing your name, please do let me know and I'll do my best to try and pronounce it correctly in future episodes. What I'm also going to do is to help distinguish between our two trains, the Peter A and the Marshalls, is I'm actually going to assign Marshalls its own individual colour scheme. And I think we'll go for something very striking, very bold, something that stands out, much like we did with the Peter A, because it is an important train, it's one of my subscribers, and it's only right that they have a prominent, proud colour scheme. And I'm going to go for a nice deep red. Let's have a look, shall we? Let's go check him out. Obviously, we can't see at the moment because we're going through a tunnel. And we can just see the front, but we can see he's got a very nice red cow catcher on the front. Let's go. Oh, yes. A very, very superb looking train. I hope you're happy with that colour scheme, Marshalls. If you would like me to change it, please do let me know and I'll I'll try my best to get the colour that you'd prefer. Same with you, Peter Ray, if you'd like to change your colour scheme. I know you did say you were quite pleased with it, but if you do want something different, let me know and I'll do my best to pick the right colour for you. Obviously, please bear in mind I am colourblind, so if I pick the wrong shade, I do apologise. You'll have to bear with me. Anyway, now that we have the Marshalls running our line in honour of my subscriber Marshalls, who commented in the last episode, expressing a willingness to have his name appear in an episode, we can start moving on with further construction. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to run from Canmore, and the next town we're going to hit is the town of Banff just up here, just around the corner. It's not a very long distance, so it shouldn't take us too long to do this. So let's start out by first of all putting in a passenger station for Banff. Now I think the ideal place to put it is going to be in this little area here. Sort of like that, because we have a road here where we can get a connection in quite easily. So we'll put the road connection in while we're in the area, then that's done and taken care of. I would like a straight road with a connection obviously sort of like that no that's got that it's got that little slope there ever so slightly I prefer it if we didn't if we had it perfectly flush with the station like yes that's much better and now we can just connect this road into the road network that exists in and around Banff so the passengers can get out of the station and into the town and likewise the residents can get from the town and into the station so that's that done. However, we still need to connect it into the Rocky Mountain Railway itself. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to run parallel with our freight line. But we're not going to use the freight line. We're going to avoid as much interaction between our passenger trains and our freight line trains as we can. So what we'll do is we'll head in this way. And then we'll snap parallel like this. And then we'll just run alongside all the way up to Canmore. I believe there should be enough room alongside the mountain to run three tracks. Yes, I think we can achieve that quite comfortably without making too much of a mess. However, doing that will make a mess, so let's not do that. And let's just run it straight forward, shall we? So as I said, because we've already got this line in place already, fixing this line into Canmore is going to be a little bit easy. So it'll be a nice quick one, this one. We'll just run it straight out like so. No, that's not right at all. See, I said it's easy. I've jinxed it now and it's 
I'm just clicking all the wrong things and making it as difficult for myself as I can, apparently. So there we go. That's our connection into Canmore, as I said. Pretty straightforward if it wasn't for me fluffing my clicking and dragging the mouse all over the shop, but we got there in the end. So we have a connection, however we are going to need some diamonds so our play planes, <laughs> no, our trains can switch between platforms and lines and we can have one way tracks. Since we've double tracked it we may as well make it one way and we'll put a diamond out here as well just by Banff and we'll put it this side of that level crossing just like that and then we can drop some signals in nice and quickly. So we're going to have a stopping signal just before each diamond so the trains can get as far as the signal before they have to stop. And then we only have two trains at the moment. We will have more in the future. And if anyone else would like a train named after them, please let me know in the comments and I shall accommodate that for you. And if you also want to let me know what sort of colour you would like your train to be, again, let me know and, you know, my colour blindness or notwithstanding, I will do my best to accommodate that request as well. But yes, we now have a train connection up to Banff, however, we're not going to have any passengers being generated here because there's no way for them to get into Banff from the station. So we're going to have to set up a bus link from Banff down here, however before I do that, what I am going to do is take the tracks here and extend them ready for the next phase of our Rocky Mountain Railway which will likely be in the next episode but I want to make sure we are ready when we do come to tackle our next leg that way we know we have a lovely smooth exit from the station without any slowdowns and weird humps on the level crossing in fact, what I'm going to do, because that the road, the track itself is fine, however the road just looks awful. So I am going to delete the road here and take it back just a fraction, just like that. And then rather than having it rise up to meet a level crossing, we'll have it dip down and it can tunnel underneath the Rocky Mountain Railway. How does that look? That's not too bad at all. And now our buses won't have to stop for trains as they're crossing and heading out towards what's the next town lake louise okay so now let's actually get the buses assigned shall we so we're going to need some stops for this obviously so we're going to have one outside the station and we'll rename this from ash street to banff station that way when i'm hovering over the passenger icons at the various stops in banff i know exactly where they're going and i can tell if our rocky mountain railway is having passenger generation okay so we're going to head up into banff and what we're going to do, this is quite a strange layout, but that's to be expected because of the train. So we're not going to have any loop system. It will loop technically, but it won't go around in a loop. It will just have to U-turn to head back out. Because we're quite prohibited by the train as to what we can do with our roads in this town. But they can turn around up there. I mean, the road terminates anyway, so there's no harm in that. And then on the way back out, I'm just going to do the usual tactic of doubling up the stations. Not that one, but we'll double up all the rest, like so. And then you're heading back out to Bamp Station, and then that's good to go. We want a road depot as well, and we'll put this just out of town, say somewhere like this, where it's not going to have any impact on our traffic in Banff. And now we want to set up the bus line itself. We don't want that chocolatey sort of colour. Instead, we shall go for... I'm going to say we'll have green. So here's our first station, Banff. And then we're heading out this way. Up there. Then back on yourself this way. You don't really need to double up there so I can get rid of that stop, if I'm honest. But we do want to double these ones up. And then you win back to Banff Station. And that should be working fine. Yes, it's doing what I predicted it would, which is always pleasing. So let's quickly name this to Bus Service Banff 01. And we know exactly what it's doing when we're looking at our line overview. And now we can get some vehicles. I'm going to say we'll go for five for the initial start. We might need more, we might need fewer, but for now five should do. 
and we'll get them assigned on the line as well. Okay, so now we have a way for the passengers and the residents to get to the station and whatnot. What we need now is a way for the train to get down here. Well, we have a way, but we need to tell the train to head down here as well. I say the train, of course, we do have two. We have the Marshalls and the Peter Ray, so let's manage their line. And now, instead of just turning around at Canmore and heading back towards Cochrane, you are instead going to come out to Banff. And then after Banff, you're not going straight back to Cochrane. We'll have you stop off at Canmore on the way back as well. Assign you onto that platform, so we have one platform for each direction. And then after you've stopped here, then you're going to return to Cochrane and restart your journey. There we go, that should work out quite nicely. And very soon, hopefully, we'll start seeing passengers being generated in Banff and at the station. Okay, so that's the first segment of this episode dealt with. I think what we'll do now is we'll probably continue heading out towards Lake Louise. Once we hit Lake Louise, we might take a bit of a break there and return to our freight lines because we don't want to neglect them too much. But I am in the zone on our Rocky Mountain Railway and I'd like to continue with it. So, executive decision, that's what I'm going to do. So, the question is how do you want to get to Lake Louise? Now, ooh, ah... I think what we are going to do is we can keep him parallel for a touch longer, just like that. But then we're going to have this train line, our passenger line, the Rocky Mountain line, just diverge somewhat, like so, and head into this valley floor. Are they parallel? Uh, yes, I think they are. It didn't look like they were from the tool, but I think they are from in reality, if you know what I mean. And yes, what we're going to do is we're going to head this way and we'll follow this road here and we can have our Rocky Mountain Railway head underneath our bridge here which would look quite scenic and quite spectacular when we have a ride along. Now, we have an issue here where the bridge pillar is just ever so slightly overlapping the track and while the trains will clip through, they won't derail or collide, it just doesn't look that great. Now, a quick trick to get that addressed is if you put a third little stretch of track in parallel as well and then delete it it moves a footing away for the third track but it doesn't move it back when you remove it so there we go we now have a clear run underneath the bridge and we can hear the steel train just heading overhead there fortunately we can't see him due to the camera angle if we scroll out a bit we can yes that is very pleasant indeed I'm quite pleased with that one. Well done, me, if I do say so myself. Moving on, then we're going to continue through this wooded valley here, which looks rather splendid, I must say. I hope it looks like that in reality, because this is looks like a little beautiful section of the Rocky Mountains. And what we're going to do is just going to follow this road up here, all the way up towards Lake Louise. Before we get any further, we probably want to go ahead and put in a station for Lake Louise. And what I'm going to suggest, and I think I'm going to do, is we'll put the station up here on this little hill overlooking Lake Louise. Because then we're at the same elevation as the next stop on our line, which will be field through here. So it's going to make things easier for us in the future if we get it up here now, nice and early. Let me just look in terms of how the tracks are going to run out on towards field we have a few roads here which we can modify if we need to and i think we are going to need to so what we'll do wab oh yes i'm going to put it there now initially that looks extremely bizarre but i will modify that and it will hopefully look extremely nice once it's all dealt with and i'm going to use some assets and train modification in that little area there to make it look a lot nicer so now we're gonna have to as i said modify these roads so we'll do that we can do it without causing the residents any distress which is always good and then our track wants to run straight out do we want to keep it level at this point in fact no i'm gonna let it follow the natural gradient that the game is determining for us I think let's see here where are we heading don't want to be heading off to the right we want to 
plug in like that. In fact, no, I'm going to force it down the way so we have a tunnel because it looked a little bit odd. Let's see. Uh, hmm. Can we just, if we take it down just a bit further, will that push our mouth of the tunnel back a little bit? Yes, it does. That's better. So, yes, we will have it run flat, but not for the reason I normally do, which is future station expansion. The reason I didn't want to run it flat for expansion purposes is... I imagine towns in the Rocky Mountains, such as Lake Louise and Banff, will not grow that much, nor in fact would I want them to, which is a bit counterintuitive to the aim of the game, but I do think it is nice to have that blend of large towns, sorry, large cities and small towns. That's what we have in real life, so why not have it in the game as well? Anyway. We'll keep that as is for now. We don't need that to go any further. Instead, we need to focus our attention in the opposite direction. And we want to head out to our tracks, which we've started laying up through this little valley here. So we'll do that. Yes, we're going to have a very long bridge. Anyway, let's continue onwards. We want to straighten up a little bit. And we also want to start heading off of the side of the mountain and down to the roadside as well. So we'll do that. There we go. We, yes, it stretch it out to just take some of the edge off the gradient. Where's our tracks? How far we got? We've still got quite a distance to go yet, so that's okay. So we've got plenty of time to get down to road level, which is perfect. I mean, we're almost there anyway, so disregard that. It's largely irrelevant because we're pretty much where we need to be in terms of our elevation anyway. So now it should be a straightforward case of just running this line alongside this valley road into our awaiting tracks just down the way there. And then we can extend our Rocky Mountain Railway line even further. And we can have our trains, the Peter Ray and the Marshalls, run all the way out to Lake Louise. That looks quite nice, having the road run parallel-ish. It's not, well, it's not parallel, but alongside our train line. It should give a nice view for any drivers heading this way, which there aren't any at the moment, but in the future there could be. Now let's head back to Banff. We have a diamond up here, that's perfect. We need a diamond at Lake Louise as well. There we go. And then we want to put the signals in. Given the distance, it does make a lot of sense to put some signals there to pull the trains off the station and out as far as the diamond. And then we just want to quickly put in some blocking and stopping signals for this line. We don't need that many. We can have quite large gaps between our trains, which encourages them to space out, especially as we only have the two at the moment. Hopefully we'll start getting more in the future. Which well, We will start getting more in the future, but hopefully we get more personalised trains in the future as well. As I said, do let me know in the comments if it's something you'd like to see happen yourself. There we go. We're almost into Banff now. Where's our diamond? There it is. I think that will do quite nicely. We probably need to set up a transport link from the station as well over here in Lake Louise. Indeed we do. We have no road access at all, so we need to put a road access in. So let's get our street tool. We want this to be straight and flat. Yes, that's fine. That's fine. And yes, it looks bizarre at the moment it does give us a gorgeous view however but in time it will look a lot better trust me well i say trust me i might not be able to do what i want to do okay so what we need to do now we need to get it into the road network for lake louise itself let's see here what's the best way to gonna is gonna be to do that what about if we come off like this and up the hill Yes, that works. It's going to remove a lot of buildings. However, they can and will rebuild. It is very steep, but given the train we're working with, I think having a steep road here is largely unavoidable. What I want to do now is just see if I can just smooth, blend a little bit of this edge in. Don't need it all blending in, because I have a plan. Like so. And now we just want to get the bus system set up for Lake Louise as well. We are obviously going to need a bus at the station, which we shall rename. 
to Lake Louise Station. And then we want to put some stops in around Lake Louise as well. So you're going to come down this way. You can come down through this huge tunnel I've created for you. And then you can just come out here. We have a natural loop here, which is great. And then head down this way. We have another natural loop here as well, which is perfect. And then you want to head back up. And yes, into the station from there. So that should give us a nice line. Let's just check it all goes as I hope it would. So you came this way. Yep, and then back out here. And then down this way. And then around this loop here. Back to 8th Street there. And back up to the station. Yes. However, I wanted you to come down here on your way to Ash Street. But we can sort that out in a moment with a waypoint. That won't be too much trouble. And let's quickly name this up. Lake Louise 01 bus service. And the colour can be that teal sort of colour. Or it would be if I hadn't lost it. Where's he gone? There we are. Where's that teal colour? That, that one there. Yes, that's fine. So now we just want to get a quick waypoint here. Go back to the line and modify it. And after Woodland Street, come this way round. There we go. That's better. Nice and clean and crisp and tidy. The last thing we need is a bus depot. Or a vehicle depot, I should say. It's not exclusively buses. It could be trucks as well. And you can be nestled in just here. Like so. If I can get him in, yes. Again, just quickly, and I do mean quickly, just run the brushing tool over that to smooth it out just a little. And then we want to get some vehicles. Again, we'll go for five, not 51. There we go. Buy them. Paint them. On they go. And then lastly, we want to get our Rocky Mountain Railway. Adjust the line so he now heads out all the way to Lake Louise. So manage the line, so after Banff you're now coming to Lake Louise, and then on your way back you want to go back to Banff. You've opted to use the opposite platform automatically, so that's perfect. And then you go into Canmore, and then you go into Cochrane, and so on. There we go, all done. We already have our first passengers being generated here, as we can see. It says they're going via Lake Louise, which indeed they are, but they are going up there to come back on themselves, that's fine. Let's just see here where everybody is going. As we can see here, this is why I named the station Banff Station rather than, was it Ash Street? I think it was Ash Street. Because now I know exactly where they're going. In terms of the other stops, I don't really care where they're going in the town. I'll be perfectly honest. I just want to know if they're going to our station. Let's check Lake Louise. We have our first passenger here as well. And you are going to William Street. Now I know, obviously, that isn't the train station. So I know they're not heading there, so I'm not that interested. So yes, uh, this weird train mod uh, effect that we have here with the sheer cliff, I'm going to dress that up off camera. Uh, so we shall have a look at that as we start the next episode. I'll do it between this episode and episode number 30, which promises to be spooky, I am sure. Do we have any trains yet heading out towards Lake Louise or on the way down this stretch of the Rocky Mountain Railway? I don't think we do. There's our Peter Ray. And where is our Marshalls heading into Cochrane? Okay then, uh, well, I think we're about at a point where we're going to call an end to this episode. So what we'll do, we'll head on our new train, the Marshalls, so we can have a, a good long look at the Marshalls train. And we'll follow him into the town. What am I doing? I don't know. Yes, we'll follow him into Cochrane, and at that point, where's where we'll call this episode done. However, I will say my goodbyes now, so we'll have this little train ride in peace and quiet. So all that remains for me to say then, ladies and gentlemen, is take very good care of yourselves. It's ta-ta for now.